现在订阅同盟会英语，不论找工作、升学或英检，表现更棒，快上 studioclassroom.com。现在请收听教学节目。Advanced Studio Classroom is on the air. Self-awareness and self-esteem today on Advanced. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another Advanced Studio Classroom. My name is Simon, and you are joining me in the studio today for our August. Lifestyle article. Our lifestyle articles, of course, are about improving your life and living your life with style. And so today we have a lesson called "Practicing Self Awareness." Discover more about the value of self-esteem. And good morals, and it's actually a two-day lesson that's divided into two parts. And today we're going to be talking about self-esteem. Joining me in the studio today to talk about self-esteem, we have Gabe. Welcome back, Gabe. Well, thank you, Simon. It's great to be here. Gabe, what is self-esteem? Well, self-esteem is, I mean, if you just want to take the words as they come, it's how you esteem yourself. It's kind of how you view yourself. Um, you know where where you are in society, but but especially、um, kind of how you feel about yourself, maybe in comparison to others.、Um, yeah, it could it could mean a lot of things. Just to clarify for those of our listeners who don't have their August magazines in front of them, when we say esteem here, we're not talking about S T E A M. Like the water vapor that comes off your kettle when you're boiling water, we're talking about E S T E E M, and that kind of means how you think about yourself or how you regard yourself, right? Yeah. All right. Also joining us in the studio today, we have Zach. Welcome back, Zach. Hello, listeners. Good to be back, Simon. Now, Zach, our lesson today is actually called "Why Your Self-Esteem Boosts Relationships." And I guess what we could take that to mean is you having a good sense of your own value improves your relationships. Would you say that's an accurate translation of that? That's how I read it. Yes. Why do you think that's true? Just guessing. Just guessing.、Um, if you see yourself with some with self worth, I imagine you would be quick quicker to、uh, ascribe self worth to other individuals. Okay. Now, just very quickly, you two, there, we have a bunch of words in English that describe people who are very confident or have very high self-esteem. Some of them are very positive, and some of them are very negative. So, for example, I just said confident. Somebody who has high self-esteem tends to be confident. Can you think of another positive word? Well, actually, I thought of a negative one, which is arrogant. Oh, rough. Yeah. yeah there's there's actually a list of. A lot of negative ones. Like there's <laughs> arrogant, there's proud, there's conceited.、Uh, well, the conceited. The negative、mm-hmm. version of confident is overconfident.、Mm-hmm. Did we say arrogant? Y- yeah. There are. <laughs> That's there how are, important that word is. <laughs> there are. There are many of the negative versions of those words. Less of the positive, right? Yeah, I can't think of too many positive words other than maybe phrases like "oh, he or she believes in themselves." Okay.、Mm-hmm. Yeah,、mm-hmm. confidence seems to be about it, though. Other than the phrases, right? Self. So tread carefully. Yeah. Why do you in think self confidence? Why do you think that is? Why there's more negative connotations、yeah. for having high self esteem? Yeah.、Uh, well, I think it's cultural. You think it's cultural? Well, there's there's like a really strong emphasis in English speaking cultures on humility, like being humble, even if it's fake humility. Okay. Like, like when you're being polite in English, you tend to be self-effacing, which basically means like,、uh, like if you're telling a joke, you tell a joke at your own expense, meaning you're the one people are laughing at, things like that.、Mm-hmm. And you might actually be a very proud person while you're doing that, but it's a way of sort of signaling politeness. That's、right? interesting. That、yeah. you mentioned is mainly in the Western culture. I see false humility in almost every culture. Oh well,、in. no, no. I I just mean there's a strong emphasis on humility 
but yeah. for many people, it will be false. That's meaning they aren't really humble. Because when I think of a, like a lot of Western cultures, I think of an emphasis on the individual and on thinking of yourself as you know being a a capable person. You know, th- there is an emphasis on being confident, and so I, I guess it goes both ways. Well, there's a lot of things, though, like um, the idea is that a confident person doesn't need to show they're confident so they feel secure enough to be humble, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that kind of thing. So one of the ways you show your confidence is by, um, well, like, uh, you know, criticizing yourself or making jokes at your own expense, things like that, because it basically shows you're confident enough to handle that sort of thing. Yeah, sure. A lot of like late night talk show hosts are known for that self-deprecating sense of humor. I mean, Mm -hmm. they kind of get praised for that kind of stuff. Okay. So nonetheless, we're in very complicated territory here where we're talking about the relationship between how you feel about yourself and how you relate to other people. Maybe sometimes you need to be confident. Maybe sometimes you need to be humble. Uh, Let's find out a little bit more about it. Today, we're going to do two readings. Listeners, the first of those readings is on page 40 of your August magazine. We're going to read down through the left-hand column and the first part of the right-hand column. There's a series of tips there. Let's do that reading together now. Practicing self-awareness. Discover more about the value of self-esteem and good morals. Why your self-esteem boosts relationships. Do you think it's important to think highly of yourself? Or do you believe staying humble is the way to go? Well, both attitudes are critical for successful relationships. You can honor and respect yourself, but you also need to check your ego often. Lording yourself over others will not work in the long run. All of us, however, need to honor ourselves by our thoughts, actions, and attention to our own needs. Over time, we want to be proud of decisions we've made. These tips can help you truly boost your sense of self-worth. Always be yourself. It's okay to study the habits and decisions of others, but make sure you're living life your own way. Be proud of your roots. Even if you grew up in a humble neighborhood or on a small farm, recognize that you have skills and values that rich kids might not have. Keep working to become your best self. Work hard to educate yourself. Read interesting books. Meet people who can give you a leg up. And pay attention to your health. Okay, so our reading there actually begins with a discussion of the things we were talking about, the importance of finding balance between uh, pride and humility, I suppose. It starts with a question. Do you think it's important to think highly of yourself? So thinking highly of yourself, would you say that's one of those negative terms or positive terms? Well, that's the question, I think. To think highly of yourself, I think, would be fall more into the, slightly more into the positive category, although... uh, That's weird. I think it's negative. Well, I suppose with the follow-up question, or do you believe staying humble is the way to go? So really, I guess it is putting it into more of a negative context. Mm. You might say neutral for Mm. that one, not overly negative or overly positive, but it is interesting, right, that we take these things in different ways. So when you think highly of yourself, Gabe, what what exactly do you think about yourself? Well, I kind of agree with Zach here. If you think highly of yourself, that means you, at least in a positive sense, you see the positive aspects about yourself. You know the strengths that you have to contribute. Uh, you don't, you know, get worried or nervous because of your weaknesses. Um, I, I think it could be a positive thing. Uh, it, it's hard to express in English, like what exactly thinking highly of yourself means. Well, it reminds me of this verse from the Bible that Paul wrote about. It says, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. And so there is a sense in which it's okay to think positively about yourself. But it just says, what he means is don't think more highly of yourself than you should think. Mm. And so, I mean, that's, I think that's I wonder if the picture on the top of page 40 kind of sums up the point where this guy is looking at the mirror and he's wearing a cape implying that he sees himself maybe as like a superhero or has some kind of 
Maybe he is a superhero. <laughs> oh. See, there we go. Maybe this he's Clark, Clark Kent. When, when you <laughs> Should think, superheroes stay humble? This is the question. <laughs> when you think highly of yourself, though, basically you think you are a high-quality person. So you, you think that uh, you're maybe better than average at various different things, whether that be like your manners are better than average or your education is better than average or mm -hmm. your quality is better than average. You tend to think you're in the higher portion of the population. And so that's what thinking highly of yourself really means. Yeah. Um, and the other question we have was, or do you believe staying humble is the way to go. Now, it's interesting. We know what humble means, but staying humble. What does staying humble imply? Well, it means uh, continuing to, um, like, trying to maintain an attitude of mm -hmm. humility. Um, it kind of, kind of forcing yourself to, uh, reminding yourself to remain humble. So it's interesting because we use the word humble in English not only to describe your attitude towards yourself or your lack of pride, but also to describe your situation. So, for example, we might say he comes from humble roots or from a humble family or they live in a humble home, basically meaning poor and lower quality. So humble can mean like low quality, poor, uh, kind of... Uh, less than great. But it can also mean you are um, treating yourself as though you are not the best, even when you are great. And so that's the key point uh, when we talk about this phrase, staying humble. The idea is that you want to keep your attitude humble, even as you stop being humble in terms of the way you are living in your skills. The mm. idea being you should be getting better and improving as a person and improving your situation, but not forgetting your roots and where you come from and not becoming proud as your life improves yeah, sure. in quality, right? Kind of seeing yourself in a realistic way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that's the goal, you know, because I would, I would say that, yeah, we shouldn't think too highly of ourselves, but, you know, we also shouldn't intentionally force ourselves to think of us as lower than we actually are. That's not necessarily being humble. You know, I just mm -hmm. think it's about being realistic and trying to be realistic. Well, that's what it goes on to say in the next paragraph. It says both attitudes are critical or necessary for successful relationships. So you can honor and respect yourself, meaning not let other people push you around, uh, being confident, um, you know, not just accepting the things other people are telling you you should do, but you know, being true to yourself, I suppose, but you also need to check your ego. Mm. Now, when we use this term ego, it does have sort of a technical psychological meaning. But when we use it here, what we mean is people who think they are really great and are behaving in an arrogant way. So yeah. we want to check our egos, meaning control them. And kind of an adjective that describes that, we would say someone is egotistical if they're overly proud or overly confident. Mm hmm. People who think highly of themselves might be inclined to think they are like nobles or aristocrats that are in control and command of other people, like lords, for example, <laughs> lords and princes. And that's our next word there, lording yourself over people, which basically means like acting like the boss or the king. Yeah. Uh, when you're treating, when you're dealing with other people. But it tells us that that is not a good strategy, right, Zach? That's right. It won't work in the long run. Yeah. So it might work at first. People might obey you for a while, but over time, they'll become tired of it. Nonetheless, we need to honor ourselves uh, by our thoughts, actions, and attention to our own needs. Okay. So what happens if you don't honor yourself enough? What happens if you don't have enough confidence? Well, you fall apart. Right? You don't get the things you need. You're afraid to say, you know, what you want. You're always uh, letting other people choose dinner and eating food you don't want to eat. I yeah, suppose. it seems like there's kind of a balance that we need to strike, right? Because, you know, in the previous paragraph, it said, you know, don't lord yourselves over other people because that's not going to work in the long run. But, it, you know, you're saying you don't want to let other people walk all over you. Oh, you know, phrase. we would say yeah. you, you want to mm -hmm. stand up for yourself and, and be yourself and make your own decisions and run your own life. So we have to strike a balance. Yeah. And uh, they end this paragraph with the line, over time, we want to be proud of decisions we've made. So you need to be making decisions and you need to be making good decisions. Uh, our lesson then gives us some tips on how we can boost our sense of self 
worth, and self worth is another one of those terms. Uh, it kind of has a positive meaning too, right? Having a good sense of self worth. Yeah, Zach mentioned it earlier when we were talking about self esteem. I, I think they're pretty related words: self esteem and and self worth. Um, just the quality that you would subscribe to yourself, I think, would be self worth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have three tips. Zach, what's the first tip? Number one says always be yourself. So here I assume they're talking about being true to yourself or being honest with yourself. Learn how to tell the truth, you know, to yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, When you're being yourself, it says it's okay to study the habits and decisions of others, but make sure you're living life your own way. That's kind of an interesting idea. When I think of being myself... I tend to think of being comfortable in situations, but Mm -hmm. that's not really what they're talking about here. They're talking about having your own ideas and Mm -hmm. coming up with your own solutions for your problems, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's, and it's, it's interesting that it, it's not saying, you know, avoid, uh, you know, observing society. It says the opposite. It's okay to study the habits and decisions of others. So it's not about imitating others necessarily, but it is about learning from what others have done well, learning from their mistakes, uh, seeing what works maybe for them and maybe what won't work for you. Um, or maybe there are th- some things that you want to imitate, but you're making it your own. Well, and earlier, Simon's used the word feeling comfortable. And I think of there's a great phrase in English that we use, comfortable in your own skin. Mm-hmm. And that often is how I think of even just being confident. Mm-hmm. But here as we're talking about like making decisions, things like that, there, I, you actually, when you started mentioning other phrases, you made me think of another phrase that I might have thrown on this, follow your own path. Oh, yeah. Right? When we say follow your own path, there isn't any sort of confusion over whether or not you're feeling comfortable. We're talking about, it's a phrase that just specifically means making your own decisions, mm-hmm. right? Doing things your own way. Always yeah. be yourself. There you go. Uh, the second tip, Gabe. Yeah, be proud of your roots. And that's the second time that that phrase uh, proud of appears in our lesson. And we just wanted to mention, or I did anyway, that that's not the use of the word proud here is not uh, the sense of being arrogant. When we see it with the word of, it's being um, it, it's that you have this confidence uh, and you're you're uh, you're feeling happy and pleased about something. Um, so it's not the idea of being arrogant. So be proud of your roots. Mm tells us here that this is kind of interesting because it it jumps deeply into the issue of social class and I wasn't really expecting that in this lesson it says even if you grew up in a humble neighborhood so there's that use of humble yeah. meaning poor right or on a small farm now this is interesting because um, there's sort of an assumption here that those are things to be embarrassed of. Right. Even if you grew up in a poor neighborhood or on a small farm. Yeah, I felt the same way when I read that. I was like, what kind of assumption is this? Yeah. Well, you do, you do hear that uh, a fair bit just because that cities seem to get um, preferred as mm-hmm. far as, like, jobs go. Um, oh, I grew up down south in the countryside where then I had to move up to the city for more opportunities. But that may or may not have taught you kind of the, the skills and the values which in which you could be proud of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think the thing, though, is that that, um, you know, that actually is sort of the American dream story. In the Western small farm? Culture. Well, you just, yeah, you... Mm-hmm. Uh, to leave the small farm? Well, not even necessarily. There's See, there's different success stories, right? right? Like one is you leave town and then you sort of go to the city and become successful. But the other one is that you become a pillar of the community, like you make a success in sort of your own environment. So you turn the small farm into a giant agribusiness corporation or uh, you sort of like, I don't know, reinvest in your humble neighborhood and improve the whole thing. Famously, Barack Obama was a community organizer in Chicago, right? No, it's interesting that you mentioned that, um, Simon, because when mm-hmm. I read it, I thought, you know, nowadays, when I'm thinking about the successful story, I thought, I would like to own a small farm one day. That seems like <laughs> a noble um, vision for one's future. Mm-hmm. But obviously, people have different understandings of what success looks like. So maybe this just gives us some insight into the writer's perspective on things. Maybe those aren't things that you necessarily would think you need to be embarrassed of. But I think the point still holds here. You can be proud of who you are and where you come from. Yeah. Even if uh, you think those things aren't 
all positive, right? Even yeah. if you've been through some difficulty or come from a, a disadvantageous situation, you can still recognize that there's some value in that and be proud of surviving that or, or enduring that. Yeah, even if those things you don't think are a mark of success or what looks like success. And, and you know, what I get from this paragraph as well is that it's easy to compare ourselves to other people. Uh, for example, in the sentence to rich kids or what you perceive rich kids might have. Mm -hmm. So uh, they go on. The third point then is keep working to become your best self. Now, I, it's important to remember here that these are three tips to help us boost our senses of self worth. And so I think the idea here is just uh, if you continue working on yourself, you give yourself more and more things to be proud of, using the phrase the way Gabe did there. Things to be proud of, things you've accomplished, things you've done, things that uh, make you worth more. Yeah. Uh, they mention specifically here um, working hard to educate yourself, reading interesting books, meeting people who can give you a leg up. Are we talking about <laughs> actually putting your leg up? <laughs> coaches here, lifting your legs? No, we're talking about giving you an advantage, helping you out in life, maybe um, connecting you to a job or a higher paying position, things like that. Somebody who can help you out. Yeah, I, I personally like this tip a, a lot because um, when I saw the first one, always be yourself, I thought, I don't, I don't know if myself is really the best thing I should just try to be all the time um, because I thought I should be the best me that I can. Because I think the difference is sometimes we get, you know, just comfortable and we compromise in our lives and, and or complacent um, and just kind of remain at the same place. But I like this tip that we should always try to uh, improve ourselves. Wow, Gabe, okay. that is a great example of practicing self-awareness. <laughs> that brings us to our second reading. Listeners, you'll find it in the bottom of the right-hand column on page 40. Let's do it now. What to consider. The big question to ask yourself is, what do I value? If you value hard work, keeping a strict schedule and helping underprivileged people, you're likely to attract similar friends. If you like your circle of friends, it's a good bet that you're doing okay, says a career coach we'll call Bethany. You can only attract what you are deep inside. Bethany believes that we need to work on our self-esteem separately from our relationships. She emphasizes, we need to spend time alone reviewing our goals, morals, aspirations, attitudes, and a lot more. Shaping our inner character and approach to life will lead us to relationships that bring us peace and calm. Okay, and so in this reading, we're introduced to a big question. What is that question, Zach? The big question that you want to ask yourself is, what do I value? Mm -hmm. And so then they give us some things you might value. If you value hard work, keeping a strict schedule and helping underprivileged people, you're likely to attract similar friends. So that's three things that you value there. One is working hard. One is being really organized and following a schedule. And then the third one is helping underprivileged people. What are those, Gabe? Well, people who maybe don't have the same kinds of privileges that you do have in life. When we say privileges there, we kind of mean like resources, skills, opportunities, things like that. So we're thinking about yeah. helping people who are less fortunate than ourselves. Exactly. Like doing charitable work. Yeah. And, and the thing with this sentence is that the author is just coming up with some examples of mm -hmm. what someone might like. So maybe you don't like hard work. Maybe you have different values. The important thing is to ask yourself, what are those values? What do you value? Because the, the main idea is that you're going to attract like-minded people or similar friends. Yeah. So you have friends that like the same kinds of things you do. And then they go on to say, if you like your circle of friends, it's a good bet that you're doing okay. Uh, you can only attract what you are deep inside. You guys so, agree with that? I like that statement. <laughs> sure. People say opposites attract. And I was like, I read this and I was like, okay, well, yeah, it's true that, you know, we attract people who are kind of like us as well. And, and we kind of push away people that, for some reason or another, you know, we feel like are not like us. Well, the key there, though, I think is if you like your circle of friends, because mm -hmm. I think often uh, we're grouped together with people by circumstance, like in particular, 
uh, you know, you sort of spend most of your time with your classmates, for example, or something like that, but you maybe don't really like all those people. Maybe you're not really a good fit for those things. And so you want to be aware of that because then you can come into, you know, contact with people who have similar values to you. There's this emphasis they give us in the last paragraph. We need to spend time alone reviewing our goals, morals, aspirations, attitudes, and a lot more. So, for example, the things we want, that's our goals, what we believe, our morals, our aspirations, what we want to do and be like, mm -hmm. and our attitudes, how we're doing those things. Um, and by doing that, we're shaping our inner character and our approach to life that will lead us to relationships that bring us peace and calm. So, by knowing who we are, we'll be able to find other friends and people around us who can support that and uh, lead us to better relationships. What do you think? I think it's a great article about you want to start with yourself and you want to consider the things that you are doing well and maybe that you're not doing too well, that you are just practicing self-awareness. And if you are feeling lonely or you want to build a better network, start with yourself and then Try to make, like Simon said, make contact with those that want the best for you. Thank you for joining us today, listeners. And please be sure to join us again tomorrow as we continue practicing self-awareness here on Advanced Studio Classroom. Until then, I'm Simon. Gabe. And Zach. Saying goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.